My name is Hatsumi Matsune, but my friends call me Glinda. I'm currently 33. Ooh, yeah, 33. I started bodybuilding so late, but um, I'm also like a mom and a military spouse. And with like being in the military, it's been like such a journey with like career and stuff like that. So I grew up in Okinawa, Japan, went to an American school. That's why like I have no like Japanese accent or like Filipino accent. My mom is Filipino. My dad is Japanese. So I know three languages in my head. So like if ever I get confusing, that's why. <laughs> um so I went to American school um, and then I met my husband. We moved to California and then in California, I decided I was going to be a medical assistant because um, I don't know, it sounded good at the time. So I did that and then decided sick people were mean. So <laughs> I I eventually we moved to um, we moved to Virginia for three years over there, I decided I was going to be an esthetician. So everything's always been in like the beauty health. So, and then we moved back to Okinawa. I was going to start my own spa here, all that good stuff, but it was like right after COVID. So I was like, maybe that's not, it's not like the best time to start a new business. So I, was, I wanted to do something that was more like I still wanted to be independent and not work for anyone. So like, I was like, okay, let me be like a personal trainer. <laughs> so I still, I work for myself, but not really. Like I get to manage my own time. Having a daughter also, it's very important because my husband leaves, comes and go all the time. So with work, yeah. Okay. So that's me. <laughs> kind of just like a, a little bit off topic a little bit, but I'm very interested. What was it like to grow up in a, in a, it really doesn't matter where per se, but grow up in one country and kind of go to a school, you called it an American school. What does that really mean in American school? So it was like, um, it was an international, so it was a private school, international school where like, so I've had like a really interesting upbringing. So I grew up in the Philippines until I was eight. But also in the Philippines, it was like I still went to an American school. So it was like we spoke English, all that good stuff. And then moving to Japan, my father, my dad, he made us go to Japanese school for three years. So then I lost all of my English. <laughs> it was like if you don't practice it, obviously, like you lose it. So I, I went to a Japanese school for three years. And then my dad was like, okay, never mind. <laughs> like America's like English is the best language. So let's go back to English. So I was in I was in ESL for about like three, four years and then we went from there. Yeah. It was wow. interesting. Yeah. That's pretty interesting so to go from, like you said, just having this kind of foundation of one language, switching to another, then going back to it and not really kind of really having a grasp on it. Um, yeah, it was it was confusing. So I tell everyone I'm mediocre in all three, but I can speak them. <laughs> like I don't like I don't even know what language I I I I think I think in English, but like <laughs> I'm not sure exactly because I can like switch off. Sometimes I'm like talking to American and I'm like switching off in English and stuff or in um Tagalog. So I'm like, oh, oh let me stop. <laughs> that's funny. Are you a personal trainer, online fitness coach, or gym owner on the verge of burnout? Are you wanting to grow your fitness business but can't add more hours to your hectic schedule? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. What were the biggest differences, though? This is another kind of off topic, but what were some of kind of the biggest differences you noticed between like the American school and the Japanese school? Um, Japanese school was super cool. So I went to Japanese school from third grade to fifth grade. And we literally like made robots and stuff like and like it was really, really interesting. History obviously is different. Like <laughs> they're like showing like you know, World War Two and stuff like everything was like totally different. And then um, 
in Japanese school, they give the children um, responsibilities. So like there's no gen, well, there's janitors, but like there's a gap that, so like lunch, you serve each other lunch. Um, and then after lunch, you go have your duties. So like you go clean toilets, you clean the classroom, you clean the hallway. So it's really fun. And oh, like cool. it, cleaning was fun. I remember looking forward to that time. Because <laughs> <laughs> like we got to play with water in the bathroom and stuff. And as long as you get it done, they don't care. <laughs> That's so interesting. Really fun. Yeah. I think that there's there's a lot of value in that too just like humbling and because a lot of people I feel like in America it's like you look down on certain people for what they do and like going to school there's there's definitely a lot of just like repetition involved right and not so much like involvement and that sounds like it was very involved and you kind of you really learn past more than just like facts and and statistics and like just some, just stuff to memorize it was really kind of like learning lessons as well Yes. So it was, yeah, it was like the responsibility and like you're a part of like a bigger, like you're part of the community and like you really are like in there, like getting stuff done, Yeah, which I love. Yeah. That's all. I really like that. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and then moving to what you call the American school. I think it's so yeah. funny that kind of like the, the distinction there. Um, but was it, was it weird, it, like, weird going from like doing all of that and having that kind of like set up and then going to this other setup where there was probably like different, a different culture, like a different um, like set of beliefs and values and things and like how, how they did things. Did it take some time to adjust to that? It did. I, so I remember like being bullied everywhere I go <laughs> like, just because I was so different. Um, uh, and then, but yeah, it was different because you know, like, obviously, I couldn't understand the teachers as well as the other kids. And um, I was in ESL. I feel like ESL, like, I had to go to ESL for like a certain amount of time because I couldn't keep up with like the English part of it. So like when it was time for like normal English class, I would go to like the ESL class, um, which was also fun because like I belonged there like everyone there like there was I remember there was a Chinese kid and like we were all like we all didn't understand each other but we all did like we're like we're like we're good here like this is where we belong <laughs> but yeah what kind of really got you thinking about the health stuff and the like exercise and, and all that kind of stuff so, uh, like, again, going back to, like, when I was a kid, right, I was, a, like, a chubby kid. <laughs> well, no, I wasn't, I wasn't really even chubby. Like, like, I was a tall kid. I was, like, tallest. Like, I was taller than boys um, in fifth grade, American school. <laughs> I was taller than the American kids. And, like, they were, like, basically, like, I had the nickname. They called me Glenda Gorilla. <laughs> because <laughs> I was like a big kid like yeah. I was like okay like cool like and I as a kid I remember being like that's right I'm going to gorilla like I used to like chase boys around and it was like it was hilarious but you know I people would bully me and I would like bully them back <laughs> but um so from there like I I feel like I've always just been conscious about like how I looked so in high school I didn't really have access to the gym or anything like that. So I would come home and like do like dance exercises in my room just to stay fit. But back in the day, like to me, fit was being skinny, like, you know, just looking like the models on the billboard and stuff like that. So in high school, I like I never touched carbs, like carbs was a no, like I would just eat meat and vegetables and it was, but then like Filipino, my mom is Filipino and like the family's Filipino. So like when we had parties, I would eat. So like, it was kind of like a, I don't know, like I wasn't educated in that aspect. I would like most of the time eat just like meat and vegetables. But when there was a party, I would let myself like 
like indulge in those yummy foods that my like relatives would cook. And then my mom would, or my grandma would make a comment like, oh, you're getting chubby. <laughs> like, okay, like, I don't want this food anymore. <laughs> but yeah, so I think it was more of like, just trying to fit in, like, I wanted to look a certain way. So I would get into like, you know, do exercises in my room as a high schooler and stuff like that. I feel like when I was kind of in that age range, you know, of, of high school or whatever, I didn't really see it as fitness. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's even the right word to use, but like, was the, do you feel like the standards were very culturally similar in Japan? Or do you think it was because you were in an American school that, that really shaped those, those values for you? Or, or like, was there really any difference between the two or was, was there? I think in Japan, honestly, is worse. Like, even, like, female adults here. I'm now, like, a personal trainer. Like, I'm a coach as well. So, like, I have a lot of, well, I have um, a couple of Japanese ladies that I do um, coach, uh, train, and stuff. And I have to tell them, like, no, that's, like, you don't have to be skinny. Like, you want more muscle, to burn more calories like we want to grow muscle like muscle growing muscle is not easy like you're not gonna like eat protein and like boom get muscle like so it's I think it's Japan is very much like oh I have to be thin I have to be thin like thin is healthy thin is healthy and I think that it's like the Asian some like some Asian culture or society is like that yeah Interesting. And what about for men? Is it, is it like kind of similar on the men's side too, or is there, are there different kind of values there? Mm, I'm not quite sure for the men. I know there's a lot of runners in Japan, like people really try to be thin, but I think nowadays you see more like buff Japanese men, which is pretty cool to see like the Bisa to East show that I did. There was so many Japanese male that was like competing. So it was really, really cool. I think I think that like everyone's getting educated in that aspect that, you know, you don't have to be thin to be healthy. Like you can be muscular and be healthy too. You know? Yeah, for sure. I think that, uh, you know, it's so interesting to like look at different cultures and see what they value differently and uh, just kind of think and wonder why, you know, there are those differences and, and things like that. But um, I, I kind of feel like I want to get ahead of myself right here, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> I know it's like a lot. <laughs> When, when did you actually like start to get into the gym and start training or at least start to think about like doing that kind of thing? So in Virginia, so I've always like as a medical assistant, like I, I've worked at multiple wellness centers. Um, so I, in Virginia, I worked at this one place where we would give everyone like injections. Have you heard of the HCG injection? So it's a hormone that pregnant women have um, to like, I guess like it eats away at um, the fat cells. Um, so we would give these people, like they would, these people would pay like a thousand dollars, like every three months to get these injections. Um, and I was like a, the medical assistant in charge of like, you know, measuring them, like making sure they're on this diet plan. Um, but being in that environment for me, I was like, dude, like, cause people would come back, like after the inject, they would lose all the weight and then come back like two, three months later and gain all of it back. So I was like, this is, you know, why not just, you know, uh, you know, like just work hard, put muscle on instead of like rebound and do all of that stuff. So for me, I wanted to, I did the HCG injection, um, just to lose like the baby weight. I couldn't, um, I couldn't lose on my own. And then, but still, we still had to like follow like a strict diet, like a low carb diet. So I was like, okay, well, if I still have to eat like this anyway, <laughs> like I'll just go to the gym and not spend thousands of dollars. So that was, um, that's what got me, um, 
to like really look into what the body does and like how it works and stuff like that. But I've always, I've always had like a gym membership like in Virginia. So it was like, it was like a little push for me to like not spend that much money on like something I could do on my own. Right. Yeah. Especially like you said, if you're doing, getting it done multiple times, that that's what seems crazy to me. Are you a personal trainer who wants to scale and grow your business online? Have you been coaching online for years yet don't know how to incorporate online into your current business model? Introducing Trainer Revenue Multiplier, the premier wealth creation system for fitness professionals that helps you earn more and work less. Visit www.trainerrevenuemultiplier.com today to schedule your free business accelerator session. If you're serious about taking your business to the next level, schedule your call today. Um, But I think it goes back to anything. There's all sorts of kind of like short cuts or like easy steps to take or like things that you can do in the short term. But if you're not changing your lifestyle, then you're then you're not really it's not going to be sustainable. And I think that that's so hard for people to get through their heads is like. Everybody wants to. It's like everybody wants to be able to find the healthy chips or the you know how can i drink what's the healthiest alcohol or what's the healthiest version of of unhealthy foods instead of just being like well what's the healthy version of food or what's the healthy version of my life instead of what's the kind of the trick what's the what's the secret what's the thing that that is going to get me there fastest and um i think that there's obviously a lot of money that's made off that through products and through you know, different supplements or different things like that. But um, at what point do you feel like you started to to really dive into and, and try to educate yourself more? And where did you find that education? So I'm um, a certified personal trainer. So when I got to Japan, I was like, okay, let me let me actually look into this. I've always like I I started following. I I can't remember who I who was the first person I started. Fo- I, I think it was Sunny. I was following these fit girls on Instagram and I was like, oh, like they look super cool. Like they were wellness girls though. So I was like, oh, they look super cool. Like look at these muscles. Um, And then I was like, I've been really interested into like looking a certain way. So I got to Japan and I was like, okay, well, let me educate myself. And like at at the same time, like it, it was something I was interested in at the same time, let me make money off of it. So it was just all about like, you know, finding my passion really. And then I started personal training um, and then I got like a bodybuilding specialist certification as well. And so I was like, okay, let me look into that. Let me like just read. I was At first I was just reading about it. It wasn't really like, I like in the back of my head, yes, I want to step on stage, but I wasn't really taking it seriously. Um, I started making like little changes in my life. And then I took a friend of mine, went to the Beast of the East show. And I was like, okay, let me, let me check this out. Like, let me scope it out. The Beast of the East show is so fun. Like it was, they had like, um, what is it? They had dry ice. Like it was super cool. They go all out for it. So I was like, okay, that looks really fun. Let me go. Like, so that was like, the thing that got me really into bodybuilding is just like watching these girls, but it was like post COVID. So it was a, there was only four girls that competed in the bikini category at last that year. So I was like, I could do that. Let me do like, let me compete with like four other girls on stage. That'll be fine. <laughs> so I saw that show and I was like, oh, that's something I, I feel like I could do. And then I got I educated myself with like the um, certification that I had um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. And so what do you feel like was the the biggest differences in just like the general certification and the bodybuilding uh, certification or whatever it was technically called that you got? Like what it, what was kind of the specifics of the bodybuilding one? Um. So the so it, it was through ISSA. Do you are you familiar? Yeah, um, I actually did so their regular the, personal training course myself. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So I think, honestly, I think they could have elaborated more on the bodybuilding aspect of it. Like it was very, very close, but like the training, it focused more on like hypertrophy and like um, vitamins and stuff that bodybuilders take and, um, you know, all the different 
timings and all the different stuff like that. Although they didn't go like so I've had to like buy extra books to like do more more of my research and obviously mm-hmm. online. Um but I've had to on top of the bodybuilding um certification that I got, I educated myself a little bit more. In your kind of I guess path around bodybuilding before you were, truly got into it, was it something that you were like, okay, I'm, tr- I'm training and, and I'm thinking about doing this or was it like, okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of still working out and exercising and learning. And if I might do this or like, what was your kind of mindset towards bodybuilding really re- like kind of like before you got into it? I've always wanted to grow my butt. <laughs> like That was the goal was to get a good butt. <laughs> so I like started following Brett, um, and not like all these people that like was experts at growing butt and like, you know, for freaking hip thrust squats. So I'm like, okay, what's the best way to grow a butt? <laughs> and then, um, but yeah, I, I thought like, I thought I was, I wanted to be wellness. Like I was like looking on, at all these wellness girls. I'm like, okay, they have good butts. Like, let me, let me become them. And then I was like, they were like, did more research to like reality. I'm like, reality check. No, you're bikini. <laughs> you're definitely not wellness. Um, but yeah, I think it was that it was like the hypertrophy part of it is like, I wanted to grow. Like I wanted more muscle, um, instead of just being skinny, I wanted to be like more muscular. And is that something that you, as you were working out and and figuring out like how your body responded that you kind of really figured out more? I got addicted to the gym and like seeing results. And I remember the first time my abs popped out, I was like, oh, that's so cool. (laughs) But yeah, it was like the, just the aesthetic part of it, I think is what really, really like got me to like build my body or sculpt my body to where I like to look like that and I was like oh I kind of look like I could do a bikini show so let me try it out (laughs) and so what really was though that final kind of straw if you will that was like all right I'm actually going to do this now um so after doing like my bodybuilding cert and like my all that good stuff um I was, I'm, I was already like a personal trainer at the time. Um, and I wanted to expand my business. Um, I wanted to really focus on like the changing the body aspect of it. Cause like as a personal trainer, like I, I help people, um, you know, get stronger, feel better about themselves. But at the end of the day, it's like, okay, like these people are all like, um, they're not trying to get on stage. They're not trying like that, that feel like that, just like, just be, they're just like, they're lifestyle people, which is perfectly fine. But I wanted to transform, like transform other people and like, like just wanted to expand my business. Um, so this, this past show that I did, I was self-coached. I was, um, you know, a lot was riding on it. And I remember crying to my friend. I was like, if if I don't win this, <laughs> if I don't win this, I'm not pursuing like, co- like bodybuilding coaching. <laughs> but yeah, it was more of like, I wanted my business to grow more advertisement for myself. Also, like I wanted to prove to myself that I can do it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess it sounds kind of just like you're saying you wanted to, you know, you really wanted to work with people who were going to be dedicated because I think that, you know, lifestyle people can be dedicated, but it's probably, you know, if somebody says I want to do bodybuilding, there's probably a higher percentage chance that person's actually going to be, you know, somebody that's going to be willing, be willing to put in that a certain level of work versus every, I think anybody in general as is probably going to say, I wish I was in better shape, regardless of the shape that they're in Um, that lifestyle client, that person that's probably coming to you that maybe is finally like, I have to do something now. My health is at risk or my, you know, they, that's a much different kind of attitude, a different kind of motivation. Um, Certainly, like I said, those people can achieve great things, but it's, it's less of an, of, of a percentage. I feel like that lifestyle clients are going to, 
stick with something or be as dedicated about something as that bodybuilding client is. Yeah. And there's, there's a timeline, like there's, you have to get on stage, like you can't dilly dally and like, oh, it's okay. Like I'll have a piece of donut. It'll be fine. (laughs) You know, there's more of a goal, like a timeline goal. Yeah. Yeah. And something that I feel like that really is something that holds someone accountable too, is that, is the 16 weeks or that 12 weeks or whatever it is. And it's like, it takes a lot to work with because they're in pain and like that, that just like comes out regardless of like, whether it's towards you, it's just, they're just in pain. So it's like, they right. can't help it. It's just mm-hmm. not for me. <laughs> yeah. Hats off to those nurses and like, you know. Yeah, for sure. It's it's funny you mentioned that. Um, This podcast is sponsored by Smoking Gun Coffee, a veteran owned coffee company that strives to give back to those in need. Don't forget to use code TWR10 for a 10% discount at checkout. So tell us a little bit about your your first prep. Tell us about how it went and and kind of thoughts versus, uh, you know, like reality versus expectations, things like that. So my first prep, I think I started 20 weeks early just to be sure um, that I could do it. Cause it was my first one. I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess this one up. <laughs> so I, I started 20 weeks early. Um, at first it was easier because like, so during, so last year, my bulk was also very calculated. Like I was doing a clean bulk. I was like, you know, sleeping with food on me, like waking up, eating, you know, just the bulk aspect of it. Um, training, training was hard. Um, definitely like tried to push myself the whole time. I think it was, it was, it's the food aspect for me that is hard. Like I love going to the gym. I love like lifting. Like it's just fun for me. I'm like, this is fun. Like, like I can lift all day. But it's the food aspect. It's like going from a bulk and then now transitioning into like a prep cut was really, really hard. Um, I did like a gradual cut and it wasn't like a like a like I said, 20 weeks is a very long time. So it was it was nice and steady and slow. Um, I think it got hard for me four weeks out like that's when it was really hard because I also have epilepsy (laughs) like it's very mild but um it is there so like there was like times where I'd be driving and like I'm on this deficit so I would have to like pull over and make sure I'm good like because I my food was very very timed um I remember I was at the gym one time and I was having these like like tremors and then like there was these like EMT guys. I was like, guys, I need you to walk me to my car. I need my emergency meds and my food. <laughs> I was like, I'm in prep. <laughs> like this is hard. But yeah, it was, I think the food part was really hard. The deficit like took a lot out of me because um I still had to work, obviously. I still had to be a mom. I still had to be a wife. And um, I think my whole family was very, very supportive in that aspect. But other than that, it was it was really fun. Like, I think I put my mind into it and I just was autopilot. Like, this is what I have to do and I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. I, I've never talked to any, any other athlete that had it or at least that they mentioned that they had uh, epilepsy. So is that something that is is kind of can be set off by food or by restricted restricting food or something like that or like what what's kind of the relationship there so my epilepsy um is triggered like with uh through like stress or you know like if i'm like deficient in nutrition stuff like that so it was very much like a like a time where i have to be careful and like make sure that everything is like prep is already hard for like normal people. But for me, I had to like, make sure I eat in time, make sure I don't put myself in a higher level of stress than it my body is already going to go through. So like, when I was tired, 
I would like just go to sleep like regardless like I don't like we would be me and my family would be out and about and I'm like guys I need to go home like I'm like I feel like I'm about to have a seizure <laughs> like I need to pop in my like emergency meds and stuff like that yeah very but, interesting yeah huh I never really yeah like I said I never never uh talked to anybody that that uh dealt with that and because like that's what I feel like a lot of actually um coaches and and stuff that I talk to they mentioned stress management is like one of the most important things when it comes to being an athlete yeah yes so um I so I was diagnosed with like depression during COVID I think a lot of us was (laughs) so I when when COVID hit I really got into like you know, meditating in the morning, I woke up like two hours before everyone else and like made sure that I, to me, like my life is scheduled. Like if it's not in the schedule, like it's not going to (laughs) happen. So like that was something I stayed on top of. Like I I made sure that uh, it's going to sound bad, but like I made sure that I could control most of the things that I could. Um, and if it was out of my control, then I would let it go. But like the things that had to happen was written down. And like, that's something I would take time in the morning by myself and do and just figure out what my day would look like. I even went as far as like planning out my whole prep. Like (laughs) I had this like three month, like written down like day by day like this is what I'm doing this is what I can't forget so like I I eliminated most of the stressors that could like come like calculation I'm very big into calculating everything so yeah I think that's what helped me a lot with the stress interesting very Mm -hmm. a very common thing for bodybuilders is is that want for control right because that's yeah. So much of what bodybuilding is, is needing to control as many variables as you can because you know, everything does matter. Talk to us a little bit about um, like that first competition. So I actually booked a hotel to sleep like five minutes away from the venue without my daughter, without my husband. I'm like, guys, I just need to like be in the zone. Like I just need to be in my bubble just so I can just focus on like my mental health and just, you know, go when I need to go not have to worry about it sounds bad but like you know I my daughter would want to hug me and like that something like that like I want to make sure that I am 100% focused on the show um so I booked a hotel um I got I couldn't sleep actually the night before like I had zero sleep (laughs) so it was it was crazy. Like I was trying to go to sleep, but my body wouldn't let me sleep. So I was like 1 a.m. like doing my makeup, doing my hair, like just trying to kill time, um, talking to my friends overseas, you know, in the States and stuff like that. So I killed time. So I had zero sleep <laughs> like that the night before the show. It was so it, it was very hot out. So it was like the tan was melting off all of that was like melting off so I was like okay well I guess I need another coat so like I got another coat um I had one friend there with me which she is a lifesaver like the whole so like I'm obviously new to the bodybuilding community like I had no one during prep like no one to talk to about prep nothing um there was the gym bros that I would like talk to every once in a while but um, no one really liked to vent to. And then my friend was like, oh, I'm going to do it too. I'm like, okay, let's go. Like, let's do it. So I had her there with me. Um, And then the day of the show, I got like my monthly cycle. (laughs) I was like, okay, well, there's no way I'm winning now. Like no sleep. Like I got my monthly cycle. Like I'm just going to have fun with it. (laughs) Like, So I was backstage. Everyone was very serious. Like they everyone takes it very like uh, as they should like it was a hard like everyone worked hard I was like okay well I'm not winning so I'm just gonna have fun (laughs) like like there was 25 other girls and I was like well everyone worked hard and I'm just I was backstage I was like let's go guys I was the loudest one in there everyone's looking at me like I was crazy (laughs) but um I was the first one out so I was like oh great like I'm the first one out like I'm like 
it was it was but once I like once they called my name for prejudging I was like oh okay this is fun like I felt like I belong there like it was something that I've been practicing for like my posing um like it was all mind muscle everything just happened it was it was really really fun it felt like I belonged there and then prejudging went well they like called me in the middle I was like oh I'm in the middle <laughs> sorry I am getting excited it was really fun and then the show it was weird because we got there at 7.30 in the morning. Our pre-judging was 7.30, but the actual show was not till 6, sorry, 4.30. So there was a gap in between. Um, my friend and I were like, okay, let's take a nap. So we go back to her house, like try to take a nap, couldn't take a nap. Like, I don't know what was going on. My body was like, you're not sleeping. <laughs> so went back to the show did the show it was really really fun and then they kept so they my my class went on they kept calling me back to the stage I had no idea what was happening like I was like okay I was just following what everyone else was saying and like as I was waiting there they were like oh you're top five I was like wait what like that's why I'm here so then like they call me they call us all back and then I won my class and then after I won my class, I was like, here, give us your medal, go back to the stage. I was like, what do you mean? They're like, well, go back to the stage. I was like, oh, okay. And then the other girl comes in and I was like, wait. So they're like, oh, you guys are competing for overall. I was such a noob. I was like, oh, okay. Like my whole family was there. Everyone was so hyped. They were so loud. My sister was the loudest one in the crowd. Like. <laughs> It was hilarious. And then they called like my name for the, I did like a little hop. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, like I won. And that was it. And then went home, had Popeyes. <laughs> um, my husband made me these pumpkin, sorry, no, the they, he made me pecan cheesecake, had a baby dessert. Like it was the best time. Had some champagne, you know. <laughs> All the things. <laughs> Yeah, I know all the things, Popeyes and pecan pie and cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. Definitely sounds like a successful venture. Uh, for you, what does the future look like in, in the sport? For me, um, so the Beast of the East was like a cheap, not cheap, sorry. It was a, it was a show that was very affordable. Um, it wasn't as expensive as the FWJ show, which is the NPC show here in Japan. Um, so this coming year, so 2024, I plan on competing for the regional show here. Um, once I win that one, I plan on going to Tokyo and doing the amateur Olympia show and then see where that takes me. <laughs> I yeah. do plan. I want I want to keep going as long as I can. I'm obviously 33. So there's um, I'm almost like. Um, what is it called? What's the for the over 40 category? Oh, the masters, yeah. Yeah, I'm almost there. So I got seven years to, you know, get as high as I can and then maybe do masters. We'll see. <laughs> Best of luck. I really appreciate you coming on. It was great getting to chat with you. Thank you so much. Before we head out, if you want to share your socials or anything like that, you can. Um, so my social is fit with Glenda. I think that's my IG. That's it. But as of now, like I'm just like doing my thing and just, you know, trying to get trying to win all the shows that I can. <laughs> if you're tired of searching for a coach or trainer, somebody who knows what they're talking about and has experience, make sure you go check out the new coaches corner on weightroompodcast.com. You can find quality, qualified coaches to help you achieve your goals, whether that's in bodybuilding or just general fitness. Stop wasting time and start achieving your goals today. The link to the Coach's Corner is down in the description below.